time, I get to introduce a video that just made that was made for this event today. Uh, as a person who works in TV, I can honestly say this: I am not yanking your chain. I am not saying this. I love these videos and how well crafted they are and well put together they are. So thank you to the video team for doing that every year. It really touches my heart, and every year it really is a meaningful, impactful video, and I, I mean that with truth. Uh, it is the 2023 Year in Review video. It'll give us an inside look at what is happening both here and half a world away in Africa. It's been an incredible year. The song in the video is called Send Me by Bethel Music. As you listen, let's remember that the Lord often sends through people. You don't have to go to Africa to be a huge part of this. It helps but you don't have to necessarily go there. All through scripture, we see the Lord using people to help send servants of the gospel to fulfill the great mission. Mission and sending is God's plan. As you listen and watch, I encourage your prayer to be, Lord, send me. Let's watch it together now. Oh, my. 
Another great job on the video. We thank God for all that he is doing. This is what it's all about and why we are here today, a life change in Jesus. All right, I have the honor of introducing our keynote speaker. Tanner Peake is the president and CEO of Every Home for Christ. Tanner spearheaded the launch of the Oikos Initiative in 2019. Did I say that right? Oh, that's awesome. Uh, I always sarcastically say my two languages that I speak are English and sarcasm, so I'm not that great on Greek. I try, but I'm not, I'm not as great. All right. With the goal of reaching every person on earth with the gospel message in this generation, he was appointed president in 2022, and his heart is for helping people encounter Jesus through his work at EHC. Tanner and his wife, Bethany, live in Colorado Springs, beautiful place on earth. If you've never been there, I'm sure Tanner would highly recommend it. And they have three children. Would you please help me welcome Tanner Peak? Well, first, I just want to thank you uh, for allowing, you, allowing me the privilege uh, of being here. I've, I'm sitting over here at a table with Diane and John and feeling like this is the only room that I would want to be in today. This is a room full of people that, that love Jesus, that are committed to making his name known, to making him, him famous uh, around the world. And so I just want to honor the Souls for Jesus uh, staff at this event is, is beautiful. I go to events all of the time. I do events, and I always say Souls for Jesus is just at the top. And so I want to really just take a second and honor all of the staff one more time uh, that I put this together. Can we just give them a round of applause? I want to talk really briefly today about probably my my favorite subject, and I hope it's a subject that it, you, you love as well. I want to talk for a moment just about the exhaustive love of God. I want to talk about our Lord and the way that he loves each and every one of us in this room, but how he loves each and every person around the world. You maybe have not heard that phrase. That's not a phrase that I think a lot of people are using that, to talk about the, God's love, but exhaustive, but that that word exhaustive means fully, comprehe fully comprehensive. When I think about the way that the Lord has loved me and the way that he's brought me to himself, I think of a love that has never failed me, that is with me all of the time, that has pulled me out of my, my own darkest moments. It's a love that is fully comprehensive. And I think when we look at scripture, we look at the overarching narrative of Scripture. What we see is a God who loves people totally and completely, fully comprehensive. We don't have to look very far. Scripture is very clear with this. John 3.16. I know this is a verse that all of us could recite here pretty easily. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The world. For God so loved the world. There's, there's nothing bigger uh, than the world. Last year, November 15th, the earth for the first time crossed the threshold of 8 billion people. And so when we talk about God so loving the world, what we're really talking about is a love that goes to 8 billion specific individuals. Not generalizations, not even people groups, but individuals that have names and dreams and families, hopes, they have homes just like me and you. Eight billion people for God so loved the world. Isaiah 43, one of my favorite verses, says that from my mother's birth, from my mother's womb, he knew my name. We're talking about a love that knows eight billion people's names around the world. Not one of us is unseen or unknown by our God. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God's mission, the mission of Christ, the one that we love, the one that loves us, is directed towards every nation, not 150 nations, not a handful. Over, there's over, depending on who's counting, there's over 221 different nations nations on the planet 
And every single one of them is loved by God. They are part of his mission. There are over 17,000 different people groups. 17,000 different groups, families of people that exist on the earth. And every one of these is under the watchful gaze and the love of Christ. Mark 16, 15 says, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to all creation. Go into all of the world. I don't know how you could be much more clear than that. All means all. Today, there's over 10,000 different cities. 10,000 cities. One of my, I travel a lot. That's a, a part of my job as CEO and president of Every Home for Christ. I get to travel. And one of the first things I always do is I get out my phone and try to figure out how many people live in this place. Every Every city, every alley, every, every person living in every remote home around the world is loved by our, by our Lord. Today, did you know there's over 4,000 inhabited islands in the country of Indonesia alone? 4,000 inhabited islands. It's just mind-blowing to me. I'm from the great state of Montana. Not a lot of islands in the great state of Montana. So when I think about Indonesia, just one country on the planet... And I think of that God's love is directed at every person and every place. And that means every one of those islands will have a witness of the gospel. It's mind-blowing. There's over, I think there's 35, I'm just off script now, 35,000 families that live in Greenland. Greenland. No one's talking about Greenland at missions conferences. 35,000 people under the watchful gaze, the loving watchful gaze of our Lord. Matthew 24, 14 and this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world. And then the end will come. Revelation 5, 9, and 10. I like this. This is the end of the story. And they sang a new song saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and open its seals. For you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for pe people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation, and you have made them a kingdom of priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. One of the things that I, I like to imagine in my, my time with the Lord, and, 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 and maybe I'm on an airplane traveling someplace, is to imagine this end of the story. We're going to someday stand before the throne of the Father, each of us in all of our diversity, the uniqueness of our stories, and we're going to stand there and we're going to adore God together. And on that day, there's going to be people from Greenland. There's going to be people from those islands in Indonesia that I referenced. People from the 10,000 biggest cities uh, on the planet. There's going to be people from everywhere. But there's 7,000 different languages that are spoken on the earth today. And one of the things that this verse makes very clear is that on that day, there'll be people from every tribe tongue, and tongue and nation. 7,000 languages chaotically mingling before the throne of the Father. This, this is our destination. In this room, this is our destination. It is clear to me, I could go on and on and on and on and on about the way that God loves people and the way that his love is exhaustive. It doesn't leave a single person behind. It's, compre it's fully comprehensive. It meets us on our highs and in our lows. And if God's love is this exhaustive, it's, it's our responsibility to turn our attention to something that is as broad as his love. Our attention must be equally as broad as his love. We must have a mission that is as wide and as deep and as broad as his heart. I want to say that again. Our lives must be committed to a mission that is as wide and deep and as broad as his love. I lead a ministry called Every Home for Christ. And as, as, my, as the bio said, I launched an initiative, or we launched, or really, you don't, you, a person doesn't launch an initiative. A team launches an initiative. I uh, was part of a team that launched an initiative that really was, I mean, a lot of people have called this foolish, but the heart, the heart behind it was to say, could we envision a world where every person has had a chance to know Jesus, not, not in just like nice metaphorical language, not just like kind of high, uh, high rhetoric, but truly, could, could, we, could we really dream about that? Could we dream about the 4,000 islands and the people of Greenland? 
Can we talk about, I just got back on Monday from Sao Paulo, Brazil. 22 million people, just a landscape, skyscrapers everywhere. Could, could we dream about a world? Could we envision a world where every person has had a chance to know Jesus? And we launched that initiative. We called it the Oikos Initiative. And, and that terminology doesn't really matter for this, for this context, but it means home or people. It was just the language that the Lord gave us for an ache and a groan. That's really all it really is, is an ache and a groan to see Jesus known. And really, as a younger generation and an older ministry, it was a desire to actually to have a vision that's as big as the heart of God. In the last five years, we've seen about 2 billion people impacted with the gospel over 155 different nations. But this isn't really today, isn't really a story about every home for Christ. It's a story about souls for Jesus. And it's a, it's a story about... A, a, a mission that has originated from Wisconsin, of all places, to carry the gospel to people on the fringes and the, outs, uh, the outside of society. It's about a group of people that have, have also tried to align their vision, their heart, with the size of God's heart. Souls for Jesus is a ministry that's committed to not forgetting that which God loves. I want to say that again. This people, the people that I'm with here in this room, Diane and John, the reason I love this ministry is because they are committed to not leaving behind that which God loves. And that's Africa. In this case, that's Africa. Some things to understand about Africa. When we talk about not leaving a, a single person behind in Africa with the gospel, or about God's love reaching every person in Africa. A couple of things to consider. First, today there are 1.3 billion people in the continent of Africa. 1.3 billion people, each with a name. Just like I'm, I'm Tanner, I'm Tanner Peak. There's 1.3 people that have that were named by their mothers and their fathers. People that were known by God that have dreams that are hopes and hopes. It's the fastest growing continent today on the planet. 40%, what we need to know about Africa is that 40% of the population, or about 560 million people are under the age of 15 years old. It's a continent of children. I want to say that again. The United States is like 320, 330 million people. There's 560 million people under the age of 15 on the continent of Africa. It's a continent of children. In 2022, 431 million people in Africa were living in extreme poverty, which amounts to the equivalent of, less, uh, of living on less than $1.90 per day. That would be like me or you trying to live off of $100 in a month in the United States. Can you imagine that? That's, that's a kind of poverty that I think for most of us is hard to wrap our minds around. So to not forget Africa means remembering the poor. It means considering the plight of individuals living in a world that's so much different than ours. Souls for Jesus through the gift of shoes is carrying, carrying Christ to a continent in need. I want to briefly just speak to the power of a pair of shoes to translate the love of God to real people in real time. One of, uh, one of the, I want to say, the joys, uh, the, the blessings, and maybe the curses as well. At times it gets frustrating, but uh, of being the CEO or president of an organization like Every Home for Christ is I get access to just so much information. Uh, I'm fairly ADD, so that's kind of a disaster for me personally. Um, so I'm just constantly stimulated with informa information. But one of the apps that we use, and maybe you, you guys are familiar with the, the app WhatsApp. We use the, the app WhatsApp. Um, this is just a way that, you know, we'll communicate with one another. And one of the blessings of being the CEO president is my WhatsApp is always full of pictures. It's always full of, like, pictures and random stories from random parts of the world. And I, I can find myself just scrolling on and on and on. I say it's kind of a curse because it's just an overwhelming amount of information. But knowing that I was going to come here and be with you, I went back and just did a quick search on my WhatsApp. I just, I just wanted to know, is there, man, is there something? What is the impact of a, of a Souls for Jesus? And I was taken back to a story and a, and a group of pictures that come 
from Benin. Now, Benin is, for most of us, is not a place that we're thinking about on a day-to-day basis. Benin is in West Africa. It's not a large country. It's not a well-known country by, in, in most respects. Uh, but Benin is precious to the Lord. We have a, a, a leader there who, Every Home for Christ, has a, has a ministry director there whose name is Sunday. I was just talking about it at the table. One of my favorite things about Sunday is if we were sitting here in worship, you would hear his voice above all other voices. I mean, he has just one of those people that when you worship with them, they just project. But he, he's got a beautiful voice. He's got vocal runs, things that I can't do. But my, that's what comes to my mind when I think of Benin, I think of Sunday. And in the past, Souls for Jesus equipped our ministry in Benin with a, con, a, a container of shoes. We empower, our model of ministry is we're very empowering to the locals. That's the, that's the way that we do ministry. That's the way we do missions. And so we've empowered Sunday to go and to distribute shoes to the people that he feels that are in the most in need and where they'll be the most efficacious in bringing the tr- love and truth of Christ. And as I look back through my WhatsApp, I found pictures of ministry in a blind community. A couple of things to understand about a blind community in Benin. In America, we're accustomed to living in a context where if you have a disability, there's, there's oftentimes you have access to government programs or other kinds of social structures. It's, it's one of the things that I think oftentimes Americans take for granted, that our, our disabled are taken care of far better than, and, than most, if not any other place on the planet. But in Benin, that's not the case. And so if you're born blind, you're oftentimes kicked to the outskirts of society. Almost like, when I think about it, it's almost like the lepers in the time in, in Christ's day. These are, these are people that are, are cast away and isolated from society. And so families will leave behind their blind children. And so over time, there's these communities that are made up of, of disabled people. And in the case of Benin, there was a blind community of, of people. And, and just, to, just, to, just to consider that, let that sit with you for a second, what it, would, what it would mean to grow up and to live in a community where you are isolated, where you're not loved, where you're not given dignity, where you're left on your own for no fault of your own. Your blindness is no fault of your own. And the stories that I was reading on my WhatsApp had brought me to tears. There were stories of people that for the first time in their life, their first time in their entire life, are experiencing the dignity of love. I want to just, I don't want to just rush through that. That there's a group of people that, for the first time in their life, because of a pair of shoes, are experiencing the dignity of love. One of the brothers, his name is Brother Gerard. I don't think that's his African name. I think this has to be uh, some, kind of, uh, some kind of fake name for him. But he said that for the first time in his life, <coughs> For the first time in his life, he knew that someone loved him. A pair of shoes translating concretely the love of God to his heart. Another sister, Sister Linda. Again, I don't think that's her African name. She said that the shoes were the first time that she experienced love from Christians. She gave her life to Christ as a result. One pair of shoes given to one soul that Jesus loves, transforming lives. I could tell you story after story, truly, I could tell you story after story about the way that that shoes today, a single pair of shoes is reaching a human heart. It's translating, translating Christ's love to real people in real time. I could go on and on and on and on. But today I really want to just commend, I want to leave you with one Simple fact. Souls for Jesus is a ministry that does have a vision that is as wide as the heart of Christ. This is a people that has a vision that's as wide as the exhaustive love of Christ. A passion to not leave a single person behind, even a blind community in Benin. They go to places today that no one else is going. You, this room, is sending shoes to places where no one else is going and it's impacting people's hearts. And as you do that, as, as you give, as you volunteer, as you pack containers, 
as you ship containers, as you give, you're part of emanating the character of Christ to the people that he loves. This is a ministry that won't leave people behind. That's what I love about Souls for Jesus. If I just to say it to you as straight as I possibly can, this is a ministry that doesn't leave people behind. And that means the world to me personally, and it means the world to Africa. So I want to conclude this way. My appeal to you in this room, at this luncheon, this day, this beautiful day in, in Milwaukee or in Wisconsin, I want to appeal to you to, to live, to continue to live beyond yourselves and to love beyond yourselves and to join a bigger picture of what God is doing around the world as, as people are being loved in real time, in real space through pair of shoes. Thank you. Tanner, thank you so much for sharing your heart today. That was absolutely awesome. Uh, as a man in television, I can also appreciate another fellow man with a great head of hair. So that was phenomenal. <laughs> thank you for bringing it today. It takes, takes gel. It takes work. That was good. I like it. All right. We honor you for being faithful to God's call in your life. It's a privilege to partner with Tanner um, and obviously his organization. That is absolutely awesome stuff. Every home for Christ. All right. He is entrusted... Tanner with massive territory, and we will continue to keep him uh, and his organization in prayer. So give him a round of applause one more time, and please do that. <laughs> At this time, we're going to watch a brand new video called Live from Botswana. Uh, we are thrilled that our first mission team post-pandemic was able to go to Africa this year. It was incredible for the team to be on African soil once again and to love the amazing people of Africa. I can't wait here to hear more about it. And let's watch it now. As we prepare for the trip as a team, I, I often will say that to the team, just, you know, when we're in Africa, we're in miracle territory. So our faith has to be big. And it's amazing when we give God room to be God how he does perform miracles. I've seen it firsthand again on this trip, absolutely. As the people come through, they have a seat right before us. And the first thing is we make sure that we have the right shoe for them. So we wanna make sure it fits. So we get out our measuring stick, we measure the foot. And then once we find out the size, I have someone behind me and I yell out, the shoe size and while they're getting the pair of shoes for me, I invite them to go ahead and put their feet in the water. The understanding that we're trying to demonstrate something and that we're just doing what Jesus did for his disciples. You know, obviously we know it from, from scripture where it's, you know, it's the last act that Jesus has with his disciples and he washes their feet and to think, boy, I'm in this position serving somebody what is the most humble place before them. But the thing is they realize, even the children realize the the act of service and the act of humility it is to wash somebody's feet. We just want them to feel the love of God in that moment, in that brief moment, because it goes so fast. You see in their eyes, you see what, what we're doing is making a difference. It's just, it's one of those, you can't put words to it because it's, it's just something you almost have to experience yourself. Sunday morning, I always ask pastor to prayerfully just choose a village church. He said, I, I know where I'm taking you and I'll, I'll be sharing an exciting testimony with you when we get there. And I thought, I didn't think anything of that. Well, when we got there, they were so excited to share with us that three years ago, when we sent a shipment of shoes, our team wasn't able to go, but they still went to villages and shared those shoes. And where we were sitting was a very church that was birthed as a result of the ministry they did there. It's because of souls for Jesus, why we had started this church in Rotterdam West. I want to tell you that this is your baby. You have a baby in Botswana. So may God bless you for the good work that you have done. And I thought, wow, on a trip that we weren't even able to go to, you know, we're putting tools in the hands of incredible men and women that are there. They live there, they're doing the work. It's thanks to the ministry, of souls for Jesus. A lot of doors are opening 
and uh, a lot of people are being sent. This trip to Botswana, you know, the shoes years ago opened doors to plant churches and open up these villages. And it is the hard work of, of people like Tonga Chihuahua that we met with over in, in Botswana. What they're doing every day is just truly making a difference. Jesus is being glorified there in that village church. And it greatly blessed me to, to hear that testimony and to be there. The last village we went to, Poloka, we, we served everyone and then we packed up at the end of the day and some gentlemen came who had been working and so they missed the shoe distribution because they were at work and we had all the shoes packed up on the truck already. One gentleman, we looked down and we saw his shoes and the sole of the shoe was completely separated from the body of the shoe and you could see his feet inside the shoe and this is what he'd been working in all day. We measured his foot, he was a size nine men's. I ran back to the truck to see if we could find a size that fit him and all the bags are you know, stacked up so tall in the truck. The top bag was a women's size 11, which translates to a men's size nine. And so I opened up the bag and the first pair I pulled out was gender neutral pair of sneakers seemed to be a good fit so we ran him back um, he put them on and they fit and he, he pulled the tract out of his pocket it was the uh the messaging that we were sharing the literature with with the rest of the group that day and he knew he knew why we were there he knew what our mission was and he knew you know we are here to share the love of jesus and he he got up in his new shoes he was dancing he was so thankful and that was just the pinnacle of, of how to end this experience. I mean, the last person of the last village and he, he just celebrated with such joy. There is a level of, of supernatural that happens when these shoes are brought over because a pair of shoes will, will change somebody's life for maybe a year or two. It's the gospel going with the pair of shoes that will change their life forever. We've had just an amazing day of serving so many people. And honestly, after many hours of fitting people with shoes, we thought we were wrapping up for the day when suddenly an entire school showed up. And we learned that actually 425 children had just arrived on the scene. And we looked at each other as a team and thought, we don't have enough time left. We don't have enough kids' shoes left but they're standing here, so let's trust God to do a miracle. If you take the small children, right, the ones who are maybe school age, that is the difference between them going to school and not going to school, the shoes. And so it was one of those moments again that we just believed as a team, like we didn't have the time and I was concerned if we'd have the sizes. And I remember thinking of Joshua when God made the sun stand still. And I'm not saying that that happened, but I am saying that in a miraculous amount of time, we served all of those students. It was in an hour and a half that somehow we wash, fitted, and shooed 430 students. At the end of that line, the teachers came through. Those teachers had no idea what I talked about with the headmaster. I said, how many students are in your school? They said, 430. I said, were they all here today? Did they all come through this line? Oh yeah, our whole school is here. I just said, wow, God, you're amazing. I don't know how that just happened. It, it was a miracle and I don't say that lightly. There were so many opportunities to see God moving, whether it was at the villages or in our transportation, in our daily activities. There were just so many moments where you think, wow, God has a hand in this trip. God has a hand in what we're doing. The first time we were in a church and as we were just praising and worshiping God in that atmosphere, my eyes were just highlighted to footprints in the sand. It was in that moment I knew God was saying, like, you don't even know the impact that you have, the lives and the people that you touch and you're reaching. God just reminded me in the moment that um, we really are leaving an eternal mark in the lives that we get to meet and the people that we're blessing. We are so grateful. We are so happy. Uh, sometimes we are just short of words. When we see um, many people coming to Jesus Christ, only through a pair of shoes, there are some things that we can take for granted, but we will never take for granted even, uh, uh, even the work that you are doing here in Botswana. Each person who is part of this mission is so vitally important. For our volunteers that come, their hands are the last to touch the shoes that will be sent. For every pair of shoes they're packing, there's a life 
in Africa that's going to be changed. There's somebody else on the other end. And it's in those acts of love, it's in those acts of, of service that God's presence just comes in. Only heaven will reveal the, the souls, the people that are there because they found Jesus in one of those villages. And you made that happen. I, I truly believe that you are investing in fertile soil. I can tell you firsthand, it, it, it's happening. People are finding Jesus. And to be able to sow into a kingdom harvest that truly is, is working and doing it is just a privilege. And I, I thank you for linking arms with us and for your partnership. Good afternoon. My name is Diane Studer, and somehow I'm going to share after that video. Um, even though my heart is filled with so much emotion and so much joy for what the Lord is just doing, it's just truly such a privilege to be a part of this, and thank you all for being here today. You know, once you meet Jesus, everything changes. Everything. I mean, did you catch the testimony from that village church? that we just heard. I mean, I had never experienced that before, just in person like that. You know, when Pastor Galani got up to speak that Sunday, I'll, I'll never forget her words. She said, you know, Souls for Jesus, this is your baby. This is the result of the ministry that happened before you even came. And that initial trip to Botswana was canceled. Maybe you picked on it, upped on it because of the pandemic. Our team was grounded for a few years. But we still sent that shipment of shoes in faith. And our amazing partners, they never stopped ministering. Just the love of God was shoes in that village. And because of many of you in this room, during those COVID years, we never stopped sending shipments. Every month, we continue to send a shipment to the 31 countries that we're in throughout Africa. And so Souls for Jesus has a baby in Botswana, and actually it's not our first. I mean, many of you that are in this room, you read our reports and testimonies, and for years, that churches are often planted as a result of the ministry that takes place. But this was the first time that I got to be in one. I got to just worship and pray and just we, we took our time that day. Team Botswana, you're here and you know. We hugged, we prayed over every person in that church. Because you know what? That's what spiritual moms and dads do. It was just an incredible day. And I can honestly tell you that amazing kingdom ministry is just happening. And this is why I love our Every Home for Christ partnership. And we always work with just the local pastors and leaders because, you know, the longer I do this, I don't believe it's just enough just to tell them the good news, just to drop it and to go. And these local pastors, they truly are. They're raising up disciples. It's so common in our photos and our stories that we see people being baptized and people growing in their faith. And Tanner, I can't thank you enough for being here today. I'm so grateful for your message to us today. And, and this man and his wife, Beth, who I love just fiercely, they, they have my utmost respect. And uh, please pray for them as they've answered the call really to um, lead this ministry of over 150 nations with just a powerful anointing and strong character. And Nathan, I know you're his right hand. I'm glad you're here today, too. You guys are an incredible team. And Sarita, the mother of the amazing young ladies who blessed us today, I honor and bless you for being here, too. Sarita is the Prayer and Margins Ministry Director, and you're going to hear more about that in a letter I'm drafting right now for the end of the year. And World Missionary Press, they're a tremendous partner to us. You guys are here today, too, the staff and board, and I'm so grateful for that. You know, we together are on the front lines, as Tanner just shared, with just a God-given strategy to reach every home. 
And the Lord has really connected us for an even greater kingdom impact. I love the song in the first video that we heard today. You know, Lord, send me. And the beautiful truth about missions is that we don't have to go to be a part. You know, there's no sign up today for a mission trip. You don't have to go to make a difference. You know, all through scripture, we see the Lord using people to help send servants of God to fulfill the Great Commission. You know, you don't have to go to Africa to be a part of this. And today, you have an opportunity to respond to the Lord and to say to him, send through me. You know, it's a privilege to partner with him and to say, send hope through me. Send salvation in Jesus through me. You know, missions is the heart of Jesus. It truly is. He loves people. It's why he came. It's why he died. And sending is absolutely, it's his plan. Matthew 25 has forever changed me. These are Jesus' words. As he said, for I was hungry, gave me something to eat. Sorry, I'm glad I've made it so far. I was a mess through that video. I probably should have won. But when you've lived it and you've seen it, it's just real. So the Lord's going to help me finish. I was thirsty. You gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. You gave me shoes. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters, you did it for me. And I think of these words so often when I'm in those villages with my knees in the, the African orange dirt. For hours, I get to look into these beautiful faces. Or when I'm on the, the feeding line, we always do a big feast at the end. And when I get to scoop out food and I get to look into each of those faces, I see Jesus in those faces. And my heart is just moved to compassion. You know, we get to be his hands and feet. I believe one day that he's going to say to so many of you in this room that thank you. You did it for me. And at the center of your table, there is an envelope for each person. Yep, we printed one for all of you. So table leaders, if you just help me at this time by just grabbing those and passing them around. And today, if you're here, I encourage you just to do whatever the Lord is asking you to do. And can I be honest with you today? Our warehouse is bursting with shoes. Those of you that are leaders and volunteer, you know it. It's amazing what God is doing as he is really supplying just incredible shoes. And, and he's just recently given me a new strategy of how we're going to make an even greater impact in the new year, which is the amount of shoes. But, but I want to be honest, we, we have a financial need to send these shoes. It's part of the reason of why we are here today. But you know, when I walk in that warehouse, I don't just see piles of shoes. I, I see souls. I really see people who need to hear about Jesus and to see his love demonstrated. And you know, as you just heard David share in the video, for kids, shoes really are the difference between them going to school or not. It's that real. And there really is an urgency because each one matters to God, truly. And once you've been rescued, you're on the rescue team. You know, if you're here today and Jesus has saved you, he's redeemed you, I invite you to help reach others. Really, that's what this is all about. And only, only heaven will reveal the souls who made it there because you responded in faith. You know, just this morning, I got a text from a dear um, supporter of the ministry who couldn't be here today. And she said, you know, this really spoke to me. She said, I love this ministry because of 1 John 3.18. And it was Jesus that said, let us love not merely with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. And I was like, thanks for that reminder. That's really what this invitation is all about. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here today.
All right, thank you, Diane, for that. And yeah, the videos are always impactful. I love them. All right, it's truly been a pleasure to be a part of this event today. The Bible tells us to go into all the world and share his love. And Souls for Jesus helps makes this possible. You can do two different things to give today. Uh, Brett, please add this slide to our screens for visual. There you see it one more time. You saw it briefly earlier. You can fill out that envelope at your table and place it in the buckets that are coming around the room very, very soon. Or on the back of your program, uh, there is a code for you to scan to make an online gift. If you want an auction item today, you will receive an email that allows you to check out online if you'd like and you make a financial gift there as well. Um, you also see soulsforjesus.org if you want to give uh, during the year, Christmas is coming, uh, in honor of someone, whatever you want to do, that is available as well. If you would rather pay by check or cash for your auction item, please fill out an envelope at your table and bring it to the auction checkout table where you can also pay with credit card right outside the doors. There are two separate checkout lines outside the auction room, and this is important. Volunteers are holding two signs to help you find the correct line, so not one but two. Some of you need a little direction out there. That's no problem whatsoever. You'll find the correct line. You follow the green sign that says paid if you've already paid for your auction items by using your phone. We encourage you to use that option if you're able, and please have your emailed receipt visible on your phone. Follow the red sign that says pay here for those of you that are still, you know, working through the process. If you need to pay for your auction items via credit card, cash, check, they will assist you with processing your payment. So please try to do that to uh, kind of expedite things, so to speak, and then you can pick up your items. If you're using the donation envelope at your table to pay for the auction items, please bring your envelope with you to the au uh, auction checkout. Do not place it in the collection buckets. Thank you for your generosity and every, every, every gift makes a difference. We try to emphasize that as well. Ushers, please make your way around the room at this time. Thank you very much. I know Diane is coming up as well. Okay, sounds good. And if you miss a bucket at your table and don't have the auction items to pick up, you can place the envelope at the center of your table and it will be collected. Thank you for celebrating with us today. Mark your calendars. We already have it one year booked out, November 9th, 2024. Um, and add it to your calendars that the Souls for Jesus luncheon will be Saturday, November 9th. Diane's going to come up and pray us out, but thank you so much for having me and God bless you today. So Diane, come on up. Let's hear it for Lance, such a dear, dear friend. Truly, truly, yeah. Appreciate um, him being here. And if you follow sports at all, you know, Lance covers it all. And he had a Badger game and a Packer game, so he goes, oh, this year I got to go to the boss on this one. And come on, we know that Lance gets his way. But that was really, really nice that he really, you know, had to do some extra work to be here today. So thank you for that. I just want to pray a blessing over you as we close today. And so if you just bow your heads and agree with me, let's do that at this time. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your presence that was just so strong in this room today from the time that the young lady sang through everything that we did today, Lord. It's just truly my greatest desire that you are high and lifted up, and, and I know that you were. So God, we just thank you for the privilege of being a part of what you are doing in the earth. Lord, You, I say all the time, certainly you don't need us. But with your great love that Tanner talked about, just your extravagant love, you allow us to partner with you in this way. So Lord, I just pray your blessing over every gift and every giver. Father, I pray that you would return it to them tenfold. And Lord, I just thank you again for your faithfulness over all these things. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Go with God. He goes with you. God bless you. Thank you.